Hello, good evening to you. Warm welcome to Prime Business with me, Pius Kojo Baka. The General Agriculture Workers Union is predicting food prices will continue to surge in the coming months despite government's intervention policies. Now, this follows the increase in inflation for the month of September 2024 to 21.5% from the 20.4% recorded in the month of August 2024. The Ghana Statistical Service has attributed the increase to a rise in food inflation. Reacting to the development, former General Secretary of the General Agriculture Workers Union, Edward Carriwe, said the impact of Galamse and the dry spell which hit parts of the country will push food inflation further in the coming days. Right. What actually surprised me was that when prices of foodstuffs were skyrocketing, uh, inflation was declining. That is two, three months back. And uh, that was a surprise to me. But as it stands, under normal circumstances, between September, I guess September, October, uh, food prices are supposed to come down. And then that will have a significant influence on the national uh, inflation. Unfortunately, if you look at the landscape of our agriculture uh, in terms of uh, production uh, uh, capabilities, you will realize that this year, 2024, we are not going to have any significant increase in food production in the country. And uh, if our total output is going to fall, then of course it would uh, push inflation up. So from now until December, to, uh, uh, and then into next year, uh, particularly the early part of the year, we should expect food inflation to continue to push the national inflation up. Away from that, civil society organizations, including the Natural Resources Governance Institute, is calling for the establishment of electric vehicle manufacturing and assembly plants in Ghana to provide valuable training opportunities for tertiary students to boost economic growth. Speaking to Joy Business after meeting political parties on energy and extractive sector manifestos, Senior Programs Officer for the Institute, Dennis Ejiri, believes such facilities will support the country's energy transition mission. The dialogue explore the rules of the petroleum sector, environment, and anti-corruption in political manifestos. It also focused on the extractive sector to promote energy security. Although the civil society organizations commended government for its efforts in attracting many global vehicle assembling companies into the country, they believe the manufacturing of electric vehicles will reduce reliance on fossil fuels. Senior Programs Officer at the Natural Resources Governance Institute, Dennis Jeju, explains. Has courses around renewable energy, which means that they would be studying things related to electric vehicles as part of their course outline. It's important that we get these students the practical avenues to, to, to practicalize and sort of uh, learn and improve on these uh, uh, academic programs so that when they come out, they are not only theoretical students, but students who can really get into the industry and uh, get involved in the processes. And so we, we think that that is really important. And so it's not enough for government to keep touting uh, the number of car uh, manufacturers that have been brought into the country, but to link it to clear directions where the world is going, and we think that electric vehicle is the future, whether we like it or not. We know that lithium battery manufacturing is the future, and some of those industries must be built um, in this country to add value to some of the natural resources like lithium, uh, graphite, uh, cobalt, nickel, and iron, and others that we have in this country. Speaking on behalf of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, Chairman of the Manifesto Committee on Mining, Dr. Tony Obin, emphasized the need for a proper management of electronic waste through the provision of some incentives. It's, it's now big money to manage the electronic waste. It is big money. The old computers, the old batteries and all that. So if you create the necessary incentive, including physical incentives, uh, make power available. Uh, people are going to produce 24-7. In fact, 24-hour economy can easily erupt from a situation where these things are collected and produced and, and then and, and value added. So they are no longer waste. Those so-called waste could become resources. They become input into some production cycle. 
The dialogue brought together representatives from key political parties to discuss their respective manifestos on how they plan to address the challenges and opportunities presented by energy transition. Coordinator for the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, Farid Atha, has emphasized the importance for SMEs to take advantage of the agreement to reach other markets on the continent. He made the appeal after 12 small businesses were selected to participate in a trade forum in Rwanda in the coming weeks. Speaking to Joy Business, Mr. Atha said many businesses are still not taking advantage of the APTA. It's time that the African Continental Free Trade Area, the Secretariat is holding the African Business Forum. In, uh, and this time, the first time was held in uh, South Africa. The second one is being held in Rwanda from the 9th to the 11th. And uh, as part of the Business Forum, African businesses from 35 countries, 35 African countries, and other businesses from across the world will be meeting in Rwanda to discuss the issue of business improvements and other things. So the companies and enterprises that we have selected, mainly from the medium, small, uh, small and medium enterprises sector, are supposed to go and get the exposure on the African continent, see how other African continents are doing their thing, they are also supposed to uh, have the opportunity to network with their counterparts and then to look for business. So the purpose of what we are doing here is to be able to build their capacity to be able to effectively participate in such forum, go there and negotiate effectively, make networking, and then also to sell Ghana to look for business opportunities for themselves. President Ekufado has encouraged private sector players to support the promotion of STEM education in Ghana. Speaking at the 150th anniversary of Kimbu Senior High Technical School, President Ekufado said STEM education would benefit the private sector immensely through increased investments. Speaking at the ceremony, President Ekufado stressed the need for more private-public partnership to develop STEM education across the country. He urged students to be prepared to acquire knowledge and skills beyond the traditional classroom walls. As we celebrate 150 years of Kimbu Senior High School, let us take pride in the remarkable legacy of this institution. But more importantly, let us look to the future and with collective effort, ensure that we are equipping our young people with the knowledge, skills, and values they need to succeed in the 21st century. I cannot express how deeply happy and proud I am to be back at senior, Kimbu Senior High School and witness its growth and celebrate 150 years of excellence. As I prepare for my impending retirement from office, I want to assure you that my commitment to Kimbu remains unwavering. Mistress of Kimbu Senior High Technical School, Sylvia Lechate, made a special appeal to President Akufado to adopt Kimbu Senior High Technical School as its own and make it a model school. Management is obliged to create a conducive learning community where learners are empowered for the acquisition of the requisite competencies for a successful life. For this purpose, the planning committee appropriately wove the team for this celebration around the vision and the mission of the school thus equipping our future leaders with the 21st century skills, the role of the stakeholders. Our students must be equipped with the 21st century skills, competencies, and values, which include critical thinking, teamwork, leadership, creativity, communication, discipline, and honesty. For his anniversary gift to the school, President Akufado presented a brand new pickup, promised a new school bus, and provided financial support to the smooth organization of the 150th anniversary and speech and prize giving day. Rana Motors has unveiled two new vehicle models called the Hyundai Mighty EX8 and the Hyundai County New Breeze Bus. According to the Chief Operating Officer of Rana Motors, Kasim Odemat, this showcases their resolve to be continually innovative and respond, responsive to the needs of customers. Here's more in the following reports. The new vehicles unveiled by Rana Motors called Hyundai Mighty EX8 and Hyundai Country New Breeze Bus 
are a combination of superior engineering, modern designs, and an enhanced load carrying capabilities. The vehicles were designed with a focus on functionality, durability, and efficiency to cater for the needs of customers. In an interview with Joy Business, Chief Operating Officer of Rana Motors, Kasim Odemat, said the new additions reaffirm the company's resolve to be innovative and responsive to the needs of its customers. We always like to launch whatever new is coming, whatever new products are coming from Hyundai or from any brand that we represent. And we believe that uh, the Ghanaian market always looks forward to be receiving those new models. And we believe that, as I said, those new models that we are launching, the mighty that we are launching today, it will be something that will give a better experience to the, to the customers. Customers already love using the Hyundai trucks and would now, will, with the add additional features and the new features that they are adding, Hyundai in, in the new improvements that they are doing always, they will also be happier into using those new trucks. If you're looking for durability, you're looking for uh, 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 a working horse, uh, also a long-term working horse, you will pick the Hyundai trucks and buses. General Manager of Hyundai Motor Company, Joseph Jeong, reiterated their commitment to growing the infrastructure and transport system in the country. Our partnership with Lana Motors uh, ensures that all Hyundai vehicles in Ghana will receive top-tier service, uh, parts availability, and expert care, helping to minimize downtime and maximize our productivity uh, for all our customers, including Hyundai is dedicated to contributing to the ongoing development of Ghana's infrastructure and transportation sectors. Rana Motors is optimistic the Hyundai Mighty EXA truck and the Hyundai Country New Breeze will provide businesses, schools and the general public effective transport solutions. Delta Airlines has officially uh, operationalized its state-of-the-art Airbus A330-900neo on non-stop service from New York to Accra, New York JFK route today. The new aircraft will add approximately 30% more capacity between Ghana and the United States. Speaking to Joy Business at the launch of the new flight, Director of Global Communications for Delta Airlines for Europe, Middle East, Africa and India, Ralph Alba said uh, its customers assured its customers of excellent passenger experience. There is more in this report. The brand new A330-900 new aircraft will add nearly 1,000 more seats each week between Ghana and the U.S. It offers four distinctive experiences, Delta One suits, Delta Premium Select, Delta Comfort and Main Cabin, and more cargo capacity to cater for growing demand. Speaking to Joy Business, Director of Global Communications at Delta Airlines for Europe, Middle East, Africa, and India, Ralph Albas said, customers can expect Delta's best-in-class service and a uniquely premium onboard experience as they travel to and from the US. Delta continues to maintain its reputation for operational excellence. The airline has consistently been recognized for excellence in passenger experience, customer service, operational performance, and workplace culture. Here are what some passengers had to say about their experience on the flight. Yeah. I love Delta. Delta for life. Yeah. How was your experience? It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Okay. The quality of service? It's okay. It's a great flight. Okay. The quality of service, you'd say? Uh, no, service. No. Okay. okay. So this is the A330 um, that we've been talking about. This is from the cockpit area. Join you has access uh, on the set of access to the area and this is how it looks like and um, this is what you'll be experiencing every time you fly with Delta uh, from now on. So they promised that the quality of service that people talked about will always be the same, nothing changes. And so uh, from the cockpit area here at the Kutika International Airport, I am MFA Apple reporting for Joy News. Chief Executive of Golden Coast Developers, Neil Oko, is urging guardians in the diaspora to contribute to the socio-economic growth of the country by investing in Ghana. He believes that opportunities abound, especially in the real estate sector, hence the need for Ghanaians living overseas to consider the sector. He spoke to Joy Business at the groundbreaking ceremony of the Heritage 100 Tar 2 project, a contemporary smart home offering affordable luxurious apartments. Here's a report. 
The Heritage 100 Towers provides homeowners with luxurious smart homes that comes with a rich cultural experience. In the heart of Laboni, one of Ghana's prime residential areas, the Afropolitan residence comes in studio as well as one, two and three bedroom apartments. The building also offers about 17 amenities with a good view of the Ghanaian coast and city. Speaking at the Ghana Real Estate Investment Summit, an event organized by Golden Coast developers to discuss the growth of Ghana's real estate sector, Chief Executive of Golden Coast Developers, Neil Oku, noted that the unique features of the building set it apart from the rest. When we started our real estate journey in 2017, we were the first to offer smart homes. And with smart homes, fully automated. You can control your lights, your AC, your house when you're in another country. And now we're the first bringing it to apartments. So with that said, I don't really believe we have competition in the high to middle net um, space. What we're doing and in the areas we're building, the quality is not matched. He called on Africans in the diaspora to invest in Ghana. We believe in Ghana. No matter what comes, what may, this is our country and this is where we are. So we have to lift our country with pride. That's why we're building the tallest building in cantonments in Laboni. That's why we're infusing African culture in everything that we do. And when people see it, when they come here, they will realize that we do it better than anybody else. John Sosei, sales manager for Golden Coast Developers, shared some unique features of the second tower of the Heritage 100 project. We are the first EDGE certified residential development building in Ghana. Most of the EDGE certified buildings are commercial buildings, okay? Apart from our sustainable and energy saving uh, features that we have in the building, there are plants. We have planter boxes from the ground floor to the top floor on every terrace, every balcony. We are basically a garden in the sky. That's the concept, okay? And we have all the parking on the ground just to not interfere with any of the plants that we have in the building. On the rooftop, we have like a zen garden that faces the sea, a sky bar that faces the airports. We are the first to have an arts gallery in the building where you can have exhibitions by local um, and um, African artists. It's a virtual golf simulator, uh, heated pool. The event also served as an opportunity for the groundbreaking announcement, which commences the construction of the Heritage 100 Tower 2. Jones shares more details on the upcoming project. We have everything from studio to three bedroom apartments. We have penthouses in Tower 1. In Tower 2, we are introducing duplexes and hybrid apartments. What a hybrid apartment is, is it's a convertible two-bedroom apartment where you can divide it via a hidden door to separate it into a one-bedroom and a studio. But this is very convenient for people who travel to Ghana a lot where they don't have to carry their things away every time they come. They can keep their things in one um, part of the apartment and the other part of the apartment is renting all year round. The event which served as the groundbreaking for the Heritage 100 Tower 2 project also hosted the Ghana Real Estate Investment Summit. In collaboration with their financial partners, Golden Coast developers promised patrons competitive mortgage rates and flexible payment terms. That's it for Prime Business. I am Pius Kujubaka. Prime Sports is next with Razak Musbao.